About as uh, disappointing as I've ever been in coaching with uh, with Saturday's effort, and it's uh, it was an embarrassment to, and it's just as uh, it can't happen like that. And um, it starts with me. I have to get our coaches and our players ready to play, and I obviously miss the mark tremendously. And it's um, it's frustrating and sickening to watch and. I certainly I mean Jerry Kill's crew did exactly what they needed to do to win the game and and give them credit and they're a really good football team but uh, we did not respond in any way and that is uh very frustrating and so uh, I'm ticked off I hope they're ticked off I haven't seen them yet but um we've uh we've got to learn from that for sure but very disappointing um you know, one of the things I think is is uh, the greatest challenge we have probably now in in um, in these college football rooms, team rooms, staffings, is um, true connection. Uh, just to where, man, I, I'm really playing for you, and I'm really playing for the school, and. Um, and when we have that true connection and relationship, you can really hold each other accountable. And um, that's something I, I've just I've got to work on to, to for us to feel more connected. Um, for when you get hit in the face like you did uh, Saturday, and um, now we quickly got to turn the page and and put that behind us for sure because we all know what the Iron Bowl means to so many, and. Um, you can fix your feelings a, a whole a whole heck of a lot with a good performance in that game. And so we've got to have a balancing act today when I get with the team on owning um, mine and, and, and everyone who had a responsibility in the way we played uh, Saturday. We've got to own that, uh, but we've got to move move forward pretty quick for sure to get ready for what I think is the best uh, team I've seen on film um, at the point at which we're playing them. I think they're playing at uh, an extremely high level. So, man, what a what a rivalry to be a part of. We're going to try to educate our young men as best we can um, with use of former players and um, the history of this great game. And hopefully they have a clear understanding of what it means to so many people. Yeah, Hugh, you know your team better than anybody. Is this team capable of coming back from an embarrassing loss like that and playing their best game, which is what it's going to take to beat Alabama? Yeah, I don't, I don't know yet. Um, I'm sure hope so. Um, that's part of you play this game or coach this game long enough, you're going to have some of those. And how you respond to it will, will determine a lot about you as a team and as a person. And um, I wish I have had a better pulse for that, but I haven't seen them yet. And um, met with the culture council this morning. I like their response, um, but um, you know that, that that's going to be a good test for all of us to see how we respond. Hugh, how, how tough is it this week to not get so amped up so early when you're, you know, you're emotional coming off a game like that? You you you're, you're a little, like I said a little angry to to make sure that you're not playing the game Thursday instead of kind of ramping back up yeah I hadn't given that a lot of thought because I'm so ticked off at, at the way we played I think the biggest temptation you have right now is is trying to make sure you don't overdo the game plan um, and, and try to do too much because you know of you think you've got to do this 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 and this and this to have a chance to to win against you know one of the elite teams in the country but so I think you got to guard against that for sure um, I don't the the over amped up I haven't sensed because uh, most everybody I've seen it's like they're in a fog uh, from what happened Saturday and we've got to snap out of that fast and so I need to see a little amped up um, come practice today and tomorrow. Here you guys 
on the offensive line and on the defensive line too had played so well against Arkansas and then against New Mexico State looked like it just you know kind of reversed what, what do you think was the biggest reason for that especially uh, on the front after after coming off such a good dominant performance in the trenches you know last week yeah lesson in humility for sure um but I will say you know offensively we just I think we could have run the ball. We we never had the uh, we we never had the chance, truthfully, and that's and I, I, that's not an excuse. It's, I mean, we had what forty two true offensive plays, and um, you know, and as the game went on, it was obvious that that they were controlling the clock very well, and and you're you've got to press a little bit, and whenever we did get on schedule, we shot ourselves in the foot with a penalty, and. Um, so I'm not sure how effective we could have been running the ball or not, truthfully. And um, it was just uh, that type of game. But uh, the most discouraging thing is is our inability to get off the field and to stop their explosive plays defensively. And so it was um, – but as good as we were, offensive line, defensive line, special teams at Arkansas, we were equally as bad in all three um, Saturday. So is this week you, you talked about kind of turning the page, getting out of that fog with Alabama this week, Thanksgiving's this week too. With all these things going on all kind of in a one-week span, how do you try to or even attempt to stay focused on any one thing at this point? Well, my lesson that I'm teaching today is about focus. And um, we'll see if they respond. I mean, they get a choice. Everybody has a choice of how you respond to whatever you're dealing with. And... And we'll all have that choice this week, but you sure would hope that um, if they got any type of competitive spirit in them as an individual, they're going to shake off um, the cobwebs and get ready for this war that they're getting ready to go into, and it will be that. Hey, you, you mentioned hey. after the game about thinking that practices didn't go well. You think you mentioned Wednesday and Thursday weren't great. Is it? Is that something you noticed in real time? And what was kind of your feeling maybe on – on Saturday morning, were you were you thinking about that? Yeah, I was uh, nervous, anxious about, you know, how we would handle the success of three straight and becoming bowl eligible and um, check that box. And now you got Alabama next. And sometimes I can talk myself into believing things, and so you have to kind of balance that. But uh, I told my wife Saturday morning, I'm, I'm really concerned about um, just. Um, are we really ready to to understand you have to earn the right to win a game? And so I was concerned, and um, but it's my job to have them ready, and it's our coaches' jobs. And uh, we as a staff this morning had a lot of heart-to-hearts, and obviously we failed in, in getting that message across to our young men. Talk about the task of uh, defending Jalen Milrow, who is so dangerous with his legs as well as with his arm. Yeah, it's, you know, we we did not fare well against uh, a, a kid similar to him down in LSU, and and now he's playing at a very high level with good receivers and good running backs. It's, uh, it's a very difficult task for sure. I don't know that you completely do that. Um, you got to hope that you do limit those explosive plays somewhat but uh stopping him is is no one's really done that so you gotta we've got to mix up the coverages mix up the plan figure out if we can get pressure to him or not do we need a spy i mean you've got all those things going through our heads right now and and how much can our kids handle and do really really well against all the different sets you might see Coach, switching gears just a little bit, this is the 10-year anniversary of the kick six. I'm just curious if you remember where you were at for that and what you remember about that game. You know, I was trying my best. I, I, I don't think that I saw it live, uh, or I, I believe I would remember that vividly. So we must have been either on a uh, playing at the same time or on a flight back or something. I can't remember, but I do remember um, – once I first saw it and found out, I couldn't wait to call Gus and say, man, you got to explain to me how in the world that felt. Um, that's got to be one of the all-time, maybe the all-time greatest finish in college football. Uh, you, 
you got to – it's definitely top three, I would think. But, um, man, what a, what a finish that was. Hugh, what do you say to the, the Auburn fans and the Auburn faithful that were there Saturday coming off a loss with the Iron Bowl, being back at home, with it being Thanksgiving week, students gone from classes? I mean, what do you, what do you say to get them back here Saturday uh, for what, what could be a really good game? Well, you know the Auburn, Auburn faithful are they, they, they're they're they have persevered through through a lot of things and they show up, and um, you know I, I've already apologized a hundred times um, for the effort that uh, we did not give them Saturday, and uh, you know this is not the first program in year one to to have some tough losses like this and. I could go down the list and mention some, but you probably know who they are better than I. Um, but we're in a rebuild. That's no excuse for what happened Saturday. But, um, man, we expect uh, to give you the, the best of ourselves come Saturday in the Iron Bowl. And so we appreciate all the times you give us your best. And I know this Saturday will be no different for them. Coach, you already mentioned about the run game from this past Saturday, but heading into this week, what is it going to take for you guys to get that going, especially going against an Alabama defensive front like how they've been It's playing? hard. You know, no one is uh, – no one's running too much on that defensive front. Um, we'll have a good plan, and our backs are good, and our tight ends are good, and our old line is, is, is competitive. Um, but we do need to establish a run game. Um, it will be no fun if you're having to drop back and throw every down. That that won't work. 15 and 41 um, off the edge for them are both really, really good. Um, so it's uh, uh, we we need to stay balanced and um, and make them have to at least honor the the run game. Hugh, you've coached against Nick Saban a number of times when you're at Ole Miss and you've had success against him. When you're game planning for a Nick Saban coach team, what are some similarities that throughout the years his teams consistently do well? Tackle, um, mix-up coverages. Uh, fronts are, are, haven't changed much. There's not a whole lot you can do with that. Uh, he's got a few more coverages that he runs now, um, but his teams are always physical and they're always going to tackle well. And um, you you see that very vividly on these tapes also. Hugh, you mentioned Jerry Kill's game plan. What was it, maybe just particularly on offense, that made it so difficult to adjust once you kind of saw what they were doing defensively? Was it mostly time of possession? I guess so what other factors do you think there were? Yeah, the time of possession killed our offense for sure um, and the opportunities we had. But defensively, um, I, it's more missed tackles than we've had the last three games combined. Um, we misaligned more times. Uh, the focus that uh, we had, obviously, for the game plan was lacking. And, um, you know, that's we, – we didn't get it done. And it wasn't a whole lot of adjustments to do. They didn't do a whole lot. Um, but man, you got to give them credit when they did have a chance to make a throw in a tight window and make a catch in a tight window to convert a, a third down or a fourth down or a score. They made every single play, and so give them credit for that. But uh, we we tackled so poorly. Coach, I know you said that you're giving a message on focus today as you lead into the Iron Bowl. For you personally, what's going to be the marker that your team is progressing in the right way after you have these discussions? Uh, I think I don't think I'll know that until after Tuesday's practice. But Tuesday's practice needs to be physical. It, it needs to set the tone of what this game is going to be like. And you're you're going to get punched in the mouth in this game, and you better be ready to respond. And it's it's going to be a physical test of your will and of you physically also. And so Tuesday needs to needs to. It can't be that totally, but it needs to set that tone. You know, I think six out of seven possessions offensively faced a third and ten or longer. Yeah. Staying on schedule has been a focus all year. Is that ultra important come Saturday? Oh, no, it, it, yeah. That game will get really difficult if, if we're not in some third and manageables. 
Um, it was just a nightmare of uh, everything we've done pretty well the last few weeks, winning first down, not having penalties, taking care of the ball. Uh, all of those things were, were pretty non-existent Saturday, and we, we need to – we're going to be very strategic about our first and second down calls to try to get us in those third and manageable. I mean, they're – I don't know. I saw their, their stats on third down are pretty dang good. Uh, I can't remember what they were, but they're in the they're in the top three or four in third downs. Hugh, with signing day coming up, how important is this weekend to get guys on campus and try and make a lasting impact? Yeah, that's it. We expect to have um, a plethora of great players here. And uh, it will be our opportunity to present to them one last time before the season ends how great the atmosphere is at Auburn, how great our fans are, how great this atmosphere, this family, um, uh, the Auburn family is to be a part of. And hopefully we can, uh, we can solidify, you know, all the ones who are currently committed and maybe swing a few others to say, man, I want to go help them build something there. I know they can. They have the resources. They have the support. Uh, we just we need some players to come join us. Coach, we cover both Alabama and Auburn and Birmingham, and d despite coming off the loss Saturday, Alabama double-digit point favorite, there's a good contention of that fan base that's terrified to come here and play this game in that building. What does that say about this program, about this game, and about the atmosphere that uh, this university is able to create? Well, I think, yeah, I think it speaks to the, the history, um, the people that have gone before us, um, fans and coaches and players who understood what this rivalry meant to so many and they were willing to lay it on the line and in particularly uh, doing it here in Jordan Hare where you know our, our fans have been incredible and I think they'll even be at another level come come Saturday and I think it just speaks to the love and passion that our people have for our program in particularly when you're playing in this game. 